Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mouse, Cat, Cheese, Cucumber. A game in which you are playing as either a mouse, cat, cheese, or a cucumber attempting to solve your objective. The game plays one to four players, ages 12 and up, and it takes about 15 to 30 minutes to play. And in the game, you're going to be assigning yourself a secret role. The mouse will attempt to get the cheese, the cheese is going to attempt to not be gotten, the cucumber wants everything to be gotten at the end of the game, and the cat wants to get the mouse. The game is going to start off with the four tiles on the board, two random uh, marker tiles that are going to indicate the flooring, and then a mouse and a cheese tile. And then players are going to draw tiles from a available pool of tiles and place them down on the board, utilizing their rotation abilities, placing them on top of each other, and forming a 5x5 five five grid. Depending on the class that you are will determine where you're going to try and have these certain characters on the board go, and your objective is going to be based on those roles. If you're playing as the mouse, you need to get to the cheese as fast as possible by placing down tiles next to the mouse and moving the mouse onto the cheese. And, of course, if you are the cat, you'll need to get to the mouse. Now, the cat doesn't appear until a certain time in the game, and the end of the game triggers when the cucumber pops up at the end. Uh, basically, what happens is you're going to be drawing imaginary lines from the cat to the mouse and the mouse to the cheese, and if they line up, then the cucumber wins. However, if they don't, the cheese will win. And that's basically the idea of the game. It's a puzzle game, strategy, tile laying game, in which you're trying to complete a secret objective based on your secret tiles that you have that are also going to have a unique ability on them. I'll show you down below how it's played, what it looks like, and then I'll give you my review. Welcome to Mouse, Cheese, Cat, Cucumber, and I'm going to set it up so that you can play up to four players. And here's how it works and what it comes with. The first thing you'll note is the character cards, the cheese, cucumber, the mouse, and the cat, and the secret roll cards, which will also have the same characters on them, uh, along with their victory condition and a special ability, which you can reveal uh, on your turn during the game to do a specially useful ability that will help you throughout the game. The uh, base number of players, you'll shuffle these guys up, and then you will deal them out to players secretly so they have their own unique objective. After you do that, you're going to take the cucumber, you're going to take the deck, you're going to draw three from the bottom after it was randomly been shuffled, take this cucumber card and shuffle it into the last four cards and then place it on the bottom of the deck. Finally, you're then going to go ahead and take the mouse card and you're going to place it somewhere in the middle of the deck area, or I should say the cat card, place it in the middle of the deck area and then go ahead and have the mouse and the cheese card next to each other. Finally, you'll take two cards from the deck here and you will place them out so that way you have a two by two grid. Now this grid is never going to be more than a five by five, so you can never place a tile outside of a five by five area. Then you're going to begin the game. Have a player start by going ahead and taking this deck of cards and dealing out four of them uh, to form a pool that anybody can draw from. You can make it a two by two, you can make it a one by four, but just make sure that people can see the different cards available to them in the supply. And we'll go ahead and have this player start. And this player is gonna look at their secret objective, and this is the cat. And their objective is to make sure that the cat gets to the mouse. But the, the, the mouse is safe up until the cat can come out. So the cat will come out halfway through the game. So their main objective is to make sure that the mouse does not get to the cheese by that time. Make sure that the cat gets to the mouse and not the other way around. Uh, go ahead and take one of these tiles and then go ahead and place it on the board. You can place it in any area that's next to another card and then you're going to check to see if you matched any of the uh, little knob symbols or the little wheels here. And if you do, you'll rotate the tiles that are adjacent. And in this case, because there's no wheel here, you don't rotate this one. However, if he were to have placed it like this, this, then he would have had rotated this card just like that. But since he placed it like this, his turn is now over. He'll refill the pool here, and if he refills it and there's a mouse, the, uh, the, the cat, then he's going to go ahead and place it on the board. If there's a cucumber, the game will trigger the ending. Uh, otherwise, it'll simply be the next player's turn. The next player will go ahead and select one of these tiles here, and once again place it on the board somewhere. So in this case, if he places it like this, based on the wheel, he'll then rotate the tile that it is adjacent to. And then once again fill up the board and the next player is then going to get a chance to go and you're always checking to see your objective this is the cheese and the cheese basically does not want to be uh, caught by the mouse and doesn't want the cat to catch the mouse either and this player over here was the mouse the 
mouse wants to get the cheese but does not want to get the cat. Uh, so this player here is going to go ahead and set something up, maybe place this just like this, rotating this tile here. And then the last little aspect of the game is movement. Now, when you move one of these tiles here, remember, you cannot move the cheese. Uh, but if you move, if you place a tile adjacent to a character space that isn't the cheese, you will move that uh, specific character. So if this, in this case, he didn't actually place it here, but he instead placed it over here, he would be able to move the mouse. He would take the mouse and he would move it along the tile that he placed in any adjacent tiles as well. So for instance, he would move it from here and then he'd follow this little pathway and move it over here. Another thing to note too, is if there were a tile over here, for instance, just like that, uh, and, th and this player were to pl place this guy here, he would actually go ahead and take this and he would move the mouse along the pathway, obviously trying to get the mouse to the cheese if that were his objective, or farther away if that were his objective, or closer to the cat, a bunch of different things that they might try to do based on their secret roles in the game. And then of course, once again, and that's pretty much it. This player is going to go ahead and take their turn. They're going to be the cucumber, attempting to make sure everything connects at the end of the game, but not before. So he's going to try and make sure that the mouse and, and, the, and the cheese stay quite a far good distance apart. Maybe he'll go ahead and place this over here, pushing the mouse even further away. And remember, the grid is not going to get any bigger than five by five. So one, two, three, four, five. That's as far across as it goes, so you won't be placing any tiles over here. And this is one, two, three, four. So a tile can go either here or at the very end there to finish up the five by five grid. And once that happens, they're pretty much out of space. But another thing to note is when playing, being this player's turn now, you are able to place on top of another tile that shares like-minded walls. And in this case, I can go ahead and place it just like that, thusly rotating this just like that. So anytime you want to place a tile on top of another tile, you can do so as long as the walls match. That will allow you to rotate other tiles around the board and also allow you to place on certain tiles that will let these certain characters move. Until, like I said, eventually you're going to keep playing out the cards and then the cat is going to pop out. And the cat's going to be placed in the closest space to the cheese. It's Possible, and thusly allowing the cat player to now begin up until the point where the cucumber pops out. When the cucumber pops out, that signifies the end of the game. So if the cucumber uh, comes out after being after somebody plays another tile on the board here, then you're going to check and see does the cheese connect to the mouse and does the mouse uh, connect to the cat if that is the case the cucumber wins however if not then the cheese player will win the cheese player being this guy over here and that's basically the idea of the game uh, can you get your little mouse to the cheese can you get your little cat to the mouse and if not can you uh, successfully keep them away from each other or together at the end of the game based on if you are the cheese or if you are the cucumber let's come up and talk about the game i'll give you a little bit more of an instance of how, how it's played and what player bases and all that and then you guys can go ahead and check it out down below on kickstarter if you would like to pick it up let's discuss mouse cat cheese cucumber this, like I said before, is a tile placement game, secret objectives with unique abilities. And I'll talk about a couple of them right now before we get into it. The first thing here is the cheese. When you reveal this card, you can reveal it, thusly allowing people to know what you are attempting to do throughout the game. It'll let you immediately rotate any one maze card. Or if you are playing as the Cucumber, you can immediately play an additional maze card without restrictions. That's awesome. Or how about the Cat? Reveal it immediately to switch the locations of the Cat and the Cheese, and so on and so forth. These will help or hinder other players or yourself, and how you choose to use them is up to you. But they give you a lot of extra ability in the game that you would normally not think to, uh, to utilize, and it's definitely something you should use because these things are quite powerful and useful. It's a puzzle game. You have to solve the puzzle that other people are trying to prevent you from being able to solve. The roles will dictate the type of puzzle you're attempting to complete, and based on those roles, you're going to place tiles on the board to try and rotate them to keep them to be in the position that you need them to be in for victory, whether it be at the end of the game as the cheese or cucumber, the beginning of the game as the mouse, or in the mid-game time as the cat. You can only win as the cat if the cat is on the board, so your only objective before that is to prevent the mouse from getting to the cheese. You can only win as the cucumber 
cucumber or the cheese if one of the two restrictions happens at the end of the game that either allows them to connect or not connect and so you're going to be preventing people from doing anything as long as you possibly can. And because of that the rules indicate how long you have to play the game. If it starts getting to the end game as a cheese player, the cheese and the mouse or the mouse player trying to get to the cheese, they're going to have a difficult time especially if that cucumber pops up. You've basically lost the game at that point and it's only the chance to win by either the cucumber or the cheese. And then of the as the cat, the cat's going to have more space on the board in the mid game, thusly allowing him to move around faster. However, the end game will also trigger for him, and he's also not going to be able to win at the beginning. If you want to play a more easier game or you're newer to it, I suggest playing as, of course, the uh, mouse player because you'll have more opportunity to win the game. I think the more strategy like minded players are going to be better at playing the cheese and the cucumber, thusly preventing things from happening, working together as a team. By playing the two player variant of the game, you're most likely going to know eventually what your opponents are trying to do, especially at the very early game, in which case, if nobody is going to try and get that mouse to the cheese, you know that that role does not exist. Thusly, you're going to create a, to create the board in order to set up for the mid or even end game based on what you think your opponent has and, of course, what you have. It is a more strategically um, versatile game than I originally expected. I thought it was going to be a pretty simple placement game. And in fact, it is as far as the rules go, as far as understanding how it is played. But when it comes down to choosing when to place, how to place, and uh, where, of course, it's going to matter quite a bit. Placing on top of other tiles might not seem very useful, but it actually can be, and it can eventually have you win the game. If you've set something up that looks like it's not in a dangerous position for either the cat to get to the mouse or the mouse to get to the cheese, and all of a sudden you place on top of a tile that shares like walls, rotating separate tiles, thusly giving a path to victory for one of the specific characters in the game. It's going to blindside your opponents. They're not going to see it coming, especially if you utilize one of your special abilities before the end of the game triggers. One turn can make all the difference in this game, and if you're not careful, you will end up losing. You're going to get better with this game over time. The more you play, the more you're going to understand how the puzzle is going to be situated in which you need to successfully get your path from one way to to another and of course the players who are newer we're gonna have a little bit more of a difficult time figuring out which tracks go where and how it all functions how it feels to place the tiles down and rotate and set up those grids you have to kind of imagine a chess like strategy in this game thinking ahead placing down for a future play that will enable you to successfully come across as the winner if you like a deep thinky game a puzzly game with simple rules and quick gameplay this is one I would highly suggest you taking a look at if you like tile placement games that fit in a small box you can take anywhere play anywhere and teach in a relatively quick amount of time also a strong choice uh, the couple little critiques I suppose I suppose I have one of them being in a two-player variant you're likely to know what the other player has rather quickly and thus utilizing your ability should be something you do specifically earlier on if you need to or in the mid game if you're the cat or maybe even at the end game if you're playing as the cheese of the cucumber don't forget to use that it's very very important it's going to be very cutthroat you're going to feel disappointed if you lose really early because the game can be triggered uh, the game can end rather quickly even on like the fifth or sixth turn or even sooner if you know what you're doing as one of the players and the other player is still learning do not be distraught by a successful by your opponent successfully achieving their victory simply reset it up again play it again do it a couple times and you will see how it plays you'll understand the concept and the puzzle will get to be clearer to you but if you're not one of those players who like doesn't like losing that much especially like three times maybe even four times in a row to a more strategically minded player. Like think about you playing a, a person that's played chess for years and you jump on to play this game, you're probably going to lose. That's just going to be how it works because of its puzzle aspect, even like a game like Carcassonne. And uh, it's also rather quick and simple and straightforward. Uh, the the puzzly aspect is the most obviously intense portion of the game, but you know what abilities there are. There's four of them. You know what they're trying to do eventually throughout the game and how they function. Uh, the artwork is fairly solid. I enjoy the artwork of the game. I like the fact that they even have uh, additional, these, these little thicker tiles here that are smaller, so if I want to plan a smaller area, I can do so. The cards are rather large, and so you'll need a larger table space to fit a 5x5 five five grid, but if they do include these little um, smaller tiles that have like a see-through look to them, which I actually really like, then you can plan a smaller space, although it does take up more space in a box, so you have to check the Kickstarter to see what they decide to do, uh, whether they decide to go with the small box with these th uh, the thin, larger, wider cards, or 
for uh, a longer box or a thicker box with the smaller table space tiles. Uh, either way, it's good, but personally, I prefer the, the tiles over the cards. However, I can see why the cards would be more useful. Like for this video, I showed you them because it was easier to see. You would see it easier when you go on the top down. But just be aware that there's table space limitations based on which game you were to choose if they provide multiple different choices. Anyway, if you're interested in taking a look at the game, I strongly suggest taking a look down below. Link in the description. It was actually a rather puzzly game. And uh, there was quite a few moments in this game where it was just like, I knew I shouldn't have done that, or, oh, I made this bad play, and it, it just ended me. But learning from my mistakes and being able to come back to win was a great feeling, and I think you'll have that one too with this game. Thank you guys for watching with our Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Mouse, Cat, Cheese, Cucumber. If you're interested in picking this one up, like I said, check out down below. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell notification button. It greatly helps us out, and we do greatly appreciate it here, and also, Check out Moonshell, a mermaid game. It's my wife's game coming out March 2nd on Kickstarter. It's another puzzle style game, similar to this one and the fact that it's a puzzle game, but also much different. It features more of like a match three Tetris style gameplay in which pieces are falling and you're collecting them and orientating them to different shapes to score points. You can also go ahead and check out our Discord, our Patreon. Thank you, Patreons. I look forward to sending you guys out these miniatures. We're almost finished with shipping labels and you'll be entered into our little uh, painting contest that we're doing very shortly stuff on the docket but i do greatly appreciate you guys joining us on discord and of course the live stream every wednesday 6 30 p.m pst where we play games just like this one every single week we have a lot of fun joining you guys and giving away games on that stream all right guys thank you so much and as always i look forward to getting the mouse to the cheese the cat to the mouse neither to either or both at the end next time <laughs>